Lee Time has just come out with a new 100 amp hour smart extra mini, they're calling it, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Anyone who's familiar with the channel and watches my battery review videos knows that I'm always using this Lee Time 3000 watt inverter to test the current draw and the BMS properties of batteries. I've used, I think, one or two of their batteries in the past. I've been really happy with them, uh, especially this inverter. But when they emailed me saying they have this new extra small, extra mini uh, 100 amp hour battery with Bluetooth, I, I had to say yes. So we're going to take a look at it this time on Ham Radio Tube. So I want to get a couple things out of the way. First, they're calling this an extra mini, which led me to believe that it's smaller than the 100 amp hour minis that we've reviewed on the channel. Well, unfortunately, it's not. It's the exact same size as other 100 amp hour mini batteries. It does include Bluetooth. But uh, you do have to pay a bit more for that. I, currently at the time of filming, I found this on Amazon for uh, $269, which is about $100 more than the cheapest 100 amp hour mini with Bluetooth. This is a Group 22NF. So there are some that are kind of in this size that are a little bit bigger. We looked at one from Cyclin Bat a, uh, a little while ago, but they are exactly the same size. So um, I don't know what they're doing calling it extra mini, but hopefully uh, we can get some good performance out of this. It's rated for 100 amp BMS continuous discharge, 500 amps for one second surge discharge. So we're going to do um, some, some discharge tests on this. I did do a capacity test, passed with flying carpets. I got 104.91 amp hours out of this, which is over 1300 watt hours. So definitely passes the capacity test with flying carpets. And again, lead time's been around for years. So they have a good reputation. They have great customer service. It's, it's a brand, you know, there's a lot of fly by night companies out there that are selling these lithium iron phosphate batteries longevity of those to be determined. So possibly that's how they're justifying the price. I don't know. I kind of would like to see it a little bit cheaper. I think 269 is a little high for this kind of battery, but who knows? Maybe the tests will uh, make it uh, worth the uh, cost of entry here. So uh, let's get into testing with the inverter here and see one if it can handle the 100 amp continuous load but i'm more curious what the overcurrent protection is because they don't actually state that in the manual so i'm curious to find that out this also has low temperature charge protection which is always a plus i think every lithium iron phosphate battery should have low charge tar char low temperature charging protection and this one does so let's get to testing now, before we do that, I guess I should talk about the app. On the top of the battery, there's a QR code you can scan that'll bring you to either the App Store or the Google Play Store. You download the app, and then you get something that looks like this. So it's a pretty simple app. At the top, you have the state of charge. We're at 97% right now. There's zero watts going through it, zero current. We're at 13.3 volts. And we can also check the balance. We got a guy, you got good balance, okay. We can check the cells. Everything looks good there. We can check the BMS, says everything is running right. This is kind of one of the more basic apps. I feel, I feel other battery companies use this same app. Uh, some of the newer uh, apps, we're actually able to see the individual cell voltage. We're also able to go in kind of to like the advanced settings and actually set our own overcurrent protection and a lot of other parameters. So we can basically program the BMS ourselves, which we cannot do with this. We also get the temperature down there. We get the cycle times and the firmware version. And that's kind of the basics of it. You can go in and name it if you want. Uh, I think it's this guy here. Yeah, so I named it 100 amp hour extra mini. So when you're pairing it, if you have, if you have other Bluetooth batteries, they'll all show up in this app from Lee Time, of course. So you can know which one you're looking at there. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, what do we have here? We've got uh, some personal stuff. Then we got customize your unique battery system here. I don't have a unique battery system, so we won't worry about that. I just want to see what the battery's doing. So that's pretty cool. So I'll have this sitting here and let's get to uh, doing some testing. So let's see what this thing can do. We've got our Lee Time 3000 watt inverter hooked up with two runs of one-aught gauge pure copper welding wire. 
Got our trusty Harbor Freight heat gun. We'll just go ahead and kick this thing into high. See what we got here. Pulling 1400 watts, 114 amps. Inverter says 1330 watts, so some discrepancy there, perhaps voltage drop, I would imagine. But that's handling it no problem. Manual says 100 amps constant current with a peak of 500. But that's doing the thing. So now let's see uh, if we can ramp it up here. We're going to kick on our trusty space heater here in the middle of the summer in Houston. It's going to be great in here. 88, uh, 88 amps, 87 amps roughly. Go ahead and kick the heat gun on high. I want to see, or low rather, I want to see what it takes to trip this BMS, if it will. They say 500 amp surge for one second. Look at that. Look at that. We just tripped it. I wasn't even paying attention to the amps because I was talking to you. That's fantastic. Okay, so we've got some really good BMS over current protection in this. Let's wait a second for this to kick back on. Okay, we're the uh, BMS. Oh, did it? Nope, might take another second for the BMS to turn back on. That's fine, that's normal. And we're back in business. So now I gotta pay attention and see what that actually tripped at. So we got 88 amps from the space heater. We'll go ahead and turn this on high. 193-ish, 192. I don't even have to get the vacuum out. Look at that, about 190 amps. After, I don't know, five, 10 seconds, this thing trips. Lee time, that is fantastic protection on this. Usually when I see batteries like this that are rated for like a 100 amp surge, or excuse me, 100 amp continuous, and then they have like a 500 amp surge, usually we have to get to that 500 amps before the BMS actually trips. This, we're under 200 and a very quick time that it, that it shuts off. So that is very impressive. Turns back on pretty quick. I'm pretty darn happy with this. Usually I have to get the vacuum out, get up to close to 300 amps to uh, shut a BMS down. So absolutely fantastic overcurrent protection. But now there's one other test we gotta do. They say it has low temperature charging protection. So this guy's gonna spend the night in the freezer and we'll come back tomorrow to see if this has low temperature charging protection. So I wanna throw this in here real quick. I've been discharging this battery after that last clip just so we can Make sure it's low enough for the 20 amp charger. I'm gonna hook up to it tomorrow once this is frozen. We'll kick in if it has uh, no low temperature charge protection. I'm at 78% now pulling 118 amps with the heat gun on high. Been doing this for the last, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Battery's not overheating. The BMS getting a little warm, but the terminals are still I wouldn't say they're cool to the touch, but they might have raised a couple degrees. So the longevity of the 100 amps rating of continuous discharge seems to be absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with the battery. It's just, it's just handling this like an absolute champ. Now let's get to uh, testing if the low charge temperature protection actually works. All right, so we got a very frozen battery here. The app says we're at 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see if we can charge this. I've just got a six amp charger here that I'm gonna use. I didn't feel like busting out my other one. Uh, but as we connect the charger to it, we see no current is going into the battery. That's a good thing. That means that low temperature charging protection works flawlessly. That is fantastic. Lead time. Good battery. I really like the BMS in this and the overcurrent protection tripped after just a few seconds of seeing about 190 amps there. So that is the review. I'm gonna give this the K8MRD seal of approval and uh, I will leave an Amazon affiliate link if you wanna pick one of these up. I also have, I believe, a discount code to lead time. If I do, I'll leave that in the description as well if you wanna save uh, any money on any of the other lead time products at the lead time website. In the meantime, my name is Mike, K8MRD. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube 73.